In this lesson, we'll provide you with some more definitions in algebra, explain what the distributive property is, and how and where you can use it. In algebra, the letters we remember are called variables. In our example, 3xy squared, x and y are considered to be the variables. The number in front of the variables are called coefficients. In our example, 3xy squared, 3 is called the coefficient. The coefficient of an expression tells you how many of a certain type of term there are. In 3xy squared, you can think of this as meaning that there are three xy squareds. Or we could rewrite 3xy squared in the following way. A number in front of a bracket can be thought of just like a coefficient. In our new algebraic expression, 4 bracket x plus 2, we can think of this as meaning that there are four x plus 2's. We could rewrite this as follows. If we simplify the expression on the right hand side, we can gather together all the like terms. We know that there are four x's and four twos, and four twos, of course, are eight. Now we'll explain to you how the distributive property works. We can take this number four in front of the bracket, multiply it to the first term in the bracket. So we'll multiply 4 to x, and that will come up with 4x. Second, we distribute the 4 to the second term in the bracket, and that is how we come up with 4 times 2, which of course gives us 8. This is how the distributive property works. The number in front of the bracket gets multiplied to all the terms inside the bracket. Now let's do another example. We will take the negative 6, multiply it to the 2x, then we'll take negative 6 and multiply it to negative 5. We will simplify the terms on the right hand side. Negative 6 times 2x gives us negative 12x, and negative 6 times negative 5 gives us plus 30. Let's show you how the distributive property can work when we're solving an equation. First, we will eliminate the brackets by using our distributive property. 2 will get multiplied to x, giving us 2x. Then we'll take the 2, multiply it to the 5, giving us 10. Next, on the right-hand side, notice that we change the negative to a negative 1. We'll distribute the negative 1, multiply it to the x, giving us negative 1x. We'll take the negative 1, multiply it to the 8, giving us negative 8. In the second step, what we'll need to do is get the x's on one side of the equation and all the terms without an x, the constant terms, on the other side of the equation. What I like to do in this situation is to name which side I want to have as my variable side and which side I want to have as my constant side. On the variable side, I want to get rid of the 10. To eliminate 10, I will subtract 10 from both sides of the equation. We are left with 2x on the left-hand side, and we have minus 1x minus 18 on the right-hand side. To eliminate minus 1x, we will add 1x to both sides, leaving us with 3x's on the left-hand side and just negative 18 on the right-hand side. We need to get rid of the 3. 3 is multiplied to x, so to eliminate the 3, we'll divide both sides by 3, giving us our answer of x equals negative 6. So we can use the distributive property to eliminate brackets in solving equations and simplifying algebraic expressions.